Update. I don't want to help my boyfriend buy a house. Original post. I've been with Mark for two years now. When we got into a relationship, we discussed what we wanted. Marriage, kids. But we haven't really talked about taking the next step yet. Mark's dream has been to own his own house. He has been saving up for it, but because we live in a medium to high cost of living city, it's not going as fast as he'd have liked. Yesterday, he asked me if I would consider covering rent and utilities for a year while he aggressively saves. Frankly, I'm not 100% on board, and I told him. I asked him if he has thought about marriage. He said that it might be too soon, and I agree, but that he definitely loved me and saw a future with me. I asked him if the house would completely be his own or if we'd buy it together. I decided it would completely be his own because we aren't married yet, and buying a house together would be risky. I asked him if he'd pay me back his share and he said, eventually. I have inherited a house from my grandmother in a high cost of living city, which I'm currently renting out. I do not want to lose it. And when I inherited it, Mark and I agreed that if we ever head towards marriage, he's fully on board to sign a prenup that ensures he has no claim on it. Here's my problem. Mark has not done anything for my grandma's house. Neither have I. The house was in perfect condition. I rented it out within months of finalizing the inheritance. But he literally has no reason to stake a claim. But by covering rent plus utilities, I will be providing monetary assistance to him and if we break up, I'd have lost quite a bit of money for seemingly no reason. In a way, I'd feel entitled to a part of his house. Is this a selfish way to think? I love him, but I don't want to assume this risk. Especially because our future together is not clear. I asked him if he'd consider moving in with his parents, and I'll find a roommate, temporarily for a year so he could save up the money. This way, I wouldn't have to spend more than I need to. He'd achieve his goal and we can still continue our relationship. But he said I was being incredibly selfish and untrustworthy because it would be our home, which was not on paper, that I clearly didn't see a future with him. And now he's not talking to me. A part of me feels like this relationship is doomed. Is there a way to salvage this? Now for the top advice before reading the update. So, he wants to buy a house with your money, in part, but you don't get to own any of it? That makes no sense. How about you split the rent and you each save the other half so that you have enough money to put a down payment on a house together, if you are ever ready to do it? Assuming you still want a relationship with a selfish kind of guy. Oh, hell no. That's such a prick thing to ask of you. He sounds like a loser. I'm sorry. Yikes. If you help pay for it, absolutely get your name on it. That seems like a huge red flag and manipulation. Especially him calling you selfish for wanting part of what you're helping to pay for. If he plans on paying you back, then just say you'll take your name off when he pays you back. Simple as that. Yep, dude knows exactly what he's doing here. You're right, he does sound hell of a manipulative. He straight up asked Opie to gift him thousands of dollars while disguising it as you cover for me. How much more does he need to save? A year's worth of rent is what? $12,000? He's going to owe you at least twelve grand. and likely wouldn't be able to repay that very quickly considering he couldn't save that unless you covered his rent for a year. Twelve grand is also not going to put a very significant dent in any down payment amount. No offense. Since you already discussed prenups, if you do decide to go through with this agreement, get a lawyer and have them write a contract. State in the contract that you covered X dollars of rent and that is obligated to pay you back, or that you get that equity stake in the property, etc. And now for the update. Thank you to everyone who commented on the post. It made me realize that I was not being unreasonable at all. After a few days, I proposed the following to Mark. I'd front him the money, instead of paying for his rent for 12 plus months, he needed for the down payment on his house. He'd calculate what percent that money would be of the total cost of the house. The houses he was considering were in the $500,000 range. I would own that percent of the house. Not 50-50 or anything, just the percent I paid for. If it pays me back within a year, without any interest, I'd remove my name from the deed and it'd own his house completely. If he doesn't pay me back within the year, he'd have to pay me whatever my percent was worth a year down the line, if he intended on owning the house fully. Otherwise, I was happy to have a 10% claim on the house forever. 
So basically, if I fronted him fifty thousand dollars for a five hundred thousand dollar house, I'd own ten percent. I would charge him no interest for the first year. However, if he doesn't pay me back, then he'd need to pay me ten percent of whatever the house was worth the next year. So if the house is six hundred thousand dollars, he'd owe me sixty thousand dollars and so on. To be honest, this isn't that great a deal because real estate prices are nuts right now and are increasing pretty dramatically. So this is literally worse than taking out a loan. I proposed this in the hopes that he declined, and we just have to go back to never having discussed this at all. To my surprise, he immediately agreed and said that he'd get a lawyer to draft an agreement, even though he hadn't finalized the house. Well, okay then. He had it ready in two days. He was incredibly pushy about me signing it, but I wanted to review the whole thing with my lawyer, so I didn't care. Turns out, there were some super shady clauses added, with my contribution being termed as a gift and not a loan. I'm not going to go into the details, but my lawyer basically said that this agreement was super problematic and would cause all sorts of issues down the line. He drafted an alternative and sent it to Mark. Mark did not sign it and was adamant that I signed the original agreement and wouldn't tell me why. He got increasingly angry, became kind of violent, which was the first time that I was very surprised slash scared, and called me a witch for not trusting him and for reducing our relationship to a transaction. After two whole days of this, of emotional manipulation and gaslighting, I decided that I no longer trusted or cared for this man, and there was no way in hell I can continue to be in a relationship with him. So yeah, I'm out of that relationship, y'all, and my money is all mine. All I can feel is peace. Too long didn't read... Mark is now an ex. Your proposed plan was well thought out. My contribution being termed as a gift and not a loan. Wow. So it turns out he was a con man all along. A long con to steal 50,000. Mark is now my ex. Even smarter move. I believe for his mortgage to be approved, he'd need to show the money was a gift and not a loan. If he has another loan listed of 50,000, it's going to change the terms of his mortgage. All in all though, good move not getting involved. It had disaster written all over it. That makes sense. But he could have told her that and explained it and asked if that was okay. But he didn't. He had it hidden in a small print and never mentioned it to her. I guarantee his lawyer would have drawn his attention to that fact. It took her lawyer to spot it. There was a huge chance he'd have used that clause to never repay her. As a banker, I say things. And money and family slash friends should never mix. Good on you for protecting yourself. This. My sister was one of the bank people with a desk, so higher than a teller but not a manager at a branch. And the stories she told? The guy never had any intention of paying you back that 50000 I wouldn't be surprised if his plan was to string you along with a promise of marriage and milk you for rent money as long as possible. Good on you for seeing through his BS. Agreed. I think him getting violent, seriously, what a piece of scum, confirms that he ultimately viewed Opie as nothing more than an ATM. Called me a witch for not trusting him. I can't say this with 100% certainty, but I'm 100% positive. Every single piss taking Rifter's final words are exactly the same. Translation, how dare you find out and call me out for knowingly trying to rip you off. It really does light up how little shame they have and how manipulative and comfortable they are, acting like a decent person to get what they want from you. Once you translate that line, you get the benefit of a little shudder and ew when you think of that person, so getting over them is easier. Now for the last story. Update. My husband is lying about working late. Original post. I am 32 female. My husband of 5 years is 37 male. Since early 2020, he got a promotion. He told me one of the responsibilities of this promotion was that he had to work until 9.30 p.m. every Friday. He told me it was to oversee the finalization of all the work they had done that week. He told me it wasn't just him. It was also one of his co-workers, Glenn, and some other people. Glenn is in his 60s, and I've met him a handful of times pre-2020, but him and his wife don't go out much. I just happened to run into Glenn's wife at the supermarket. I barely recognized her, but she called out my name first and we began talking. She was saying she was finally beginning to feel comfortable going out again. 
And how her and Glenn had begun to take cooking classes, so she was at the store getting something for their class tonight. I was confused and asked if Glenn was getting out early tonight. Since my husband never gets out early, he always comes home at 10 p.m. on the dot. She said no, they were going after he came home from work. I was like, wow, you guys are really night owls. She looked confused and was like, well, it's over 7.30, so I asked her what about Glenn working late on Fridays. And she was so confused and was like he's never worked late on Fridays. So it was pretty awkward and I just told her to enjoy her class and left. I know he said it's Glenn is working late with. He talks about it all the time. After everyone left me and Glenn got X for dinner, Glenn complained how tired he was the whole time, etc. He normally comes home at 5.30. His phone is always off at work, so when I try to call him, it went right to voicemail. His direct office phone just rings in the actual company line, so I can't reach anyone because it's after hours. I don't know what to do until he gets home. I know I need to confront him, but I'm terrified of what he's going to say. Now for the top advice before reading the update. I don't have any specific advice other than confronting him about this two-year ongoing lie. Also, I am now emotionally invested in this and want to know what happens after you talk to him. It's an awful situation for sure. I can't see this being anything but bad, but I really hope it's not infidelity. I'd go sit outside his work, see if his car is there for the next few Fridays. If he leaves, follow. Do some investigating. I wanted to surprise you for dinner, but you weren't there. Ask him about his evening at work. Make him seem like all is well. He'll end up mentioning Glenn at some point, but try to avoid asking him about Glenn directly or he could suspect you may know. Once he spun a web of flies about Glenn and him working together, you then tell him that you met Glenn's wife and she told you he's never worked late. Watch him try to lie his way out of that one. And don't give too much info. Let him talk. They generally get uncomfortable with the silence and talk themselves into a hole. This is dumb if she already knows he's lying. Just tell him so I ran into Glenn's wife and she said he doesn't work late. What have you been doing on Fridays? Don't play stupid games. Be confident, have self-esteem, and communicate. I'm a super patient person, so I would investigate. Go to his work on Fridays, sit at a parking lot, maybe follow if he leaves, I'd take pictures. Dig into financials and calls and anything else you can think of. If anything is going on, I'd compile it all and give it to him with some divorce papers. If you aren't patient, you straight up tell him what happened. I'd probably just tell him I saw Glenn and he said he never works late with you. Don't even believe him when he says it's another Glenn. Pack your things and go until he decides to tell you the truth. Maybe it isn't something as bad as you think. Maybe he's taking some classes or something. Either way, you have got to find out and then let us know what happened. And now for the update. Good day. My last post was about how I found out my husband lied to me about working late for the last two years. He said he had to work Fridays until 9.30 p.m. Then I ran into the wife of the co-workers he claimed he was working with and she let me know that wasn't true. I confronted my husband when he got home at 10 p.m. on the dot on Friday. I told him I knew he was lying about working late. He tried to deny it until I told him I had spoken to Glenn's wife. He then tried to say Glenn had stopped working late recently, but then I let him know that Glenn's wife told me he had never worked late. Eventually, I found out he was cheating on me with a woman down the street from us. She has two entrances into her driveway, and he would use the north entrance and then park in her garage, so even if the kids and I drove by, we wouldn't see. Then he would leave her house at exactly 9.58 to be home at 10. I am leaving him, which he doesn't want. A lot of people said to get proof of his cheating. In our state, it doesn't make a difference if I had proof of adultery or not. Thank you to everyone for your comments and well wishes. Have a great night. I am so sorry. You deserve better and I'm proud of you for leaving. You do what serves you best. I mean, after all, he had no issue being profoundly selfish, a liar, and a sneak for two years. So he shouldn't be surprised. Divorce sucks. It's scary and stressful, but it also has another side at the end which will hopefully be filled with calm and healing for you and your children. 
Best wishes. I'm so sorry that you have to deal with us. This. The audacity of the man to claim he doesn't want her to leave him after cheating on her for two years. What the hell did he think was going to happen? I had been so hopeful there was another Glenn or some kind of misunderstanding for your sake. Really sorry to hear this. Wish you the best luck, OP. That sucks. So he probably went around her house on other days than Fridays. Talk to a lawyer before doing anything. You should stay in your home and ask him to leave, because that gives you an advantage. Yes to this. Don't leave the house at all. Consultations help a lot and are usually free or cost around $30 to $50. You do not have to use a lawyer or pick the first one you come across. Shop around. The paperwork is not hard. I did the first steps myself. I'm sorry this happened to you. What an absolute piece of... I can write a thesis about what I think of him but won't change anything. You made a right decision, and you will end up better and stronger. You're so strong standing by your decision and not let him emotionally manipulate you. You have no idea how strong you are. Well, at least for me. Hugs from far and electronically. We're proud of you. We support you. You didn't deserve this.